Hello, Peter Forsana Zero of Cyrus, and welcome to my review for one of my most anticipated games that came out this year, Tales of Exilia. Being a fan of RPGs in general and being a huge fan of the Tales series, I can honestly say that I was really hyped to hear that Tales of Exilia was finally getting localized in North America and Europe. Especially with how it's been basically two years since Exilia was released in Japan. So yeah, we've been waiting for the localization for Tales of Exilia for quite some time, to say the least. But now that it has come out, one important question comes to mind. How does Exilia fare by itself as a game? Well, after extensively playing through the game, I am now ready to answer that question in this review. So without further delay, let's start this review! Tales of Xeria is an action RPG that was developed by Namco Tales Studios and published by Namco Bandai. Visually, I personally think the game looks really good for the most part in terms of the character models, dungeons, and the towns. The towns in Zilla looks great. I mean, look at Fenmont. Fenmont looks absolutely amazing. It's probably one of the best looking towns I've seen in an RPG this gen. And the other towns such as Shandu, Hamil, Lerond, and etc. looks really good. And I especially love Trigev visual design. There's no stretch to say that I personally think that Zillia got the best towns in the series for me in terms of visuals. And they're decently big as well, and they do give a good job making the town feel more populated with the number of NPCs you can see on screen, and the NPCs background noise is also a really nice touch. Even though the type of dialogue does get repeated. The towns are vibrant, visually interesting, and I just love going through the towns in Exilia. And the dungeon looks pretty nice to me, and there is a decent amount of them in terms of variety. The character models also look pretty good, especially with the game giving you tons of attachments to modify the look of your character, which is a really nice touch in both visual flair and customization. And speaking of character models, I love the character design in this game. With not only for the main cast, but also the antagonists, side characters, and NPCs. And I have to add that Leia is probably one of my favorite female character designs in the Tales series. And overall, I just love the overall art style of Exilia. Not only regarding to the character design, but also how the overall world looks as well. Exilia might not be the most graphically impressive game. I mean, it was released in Japan two years ago and there are a few texture problems here and there, but I still love the overall visual that Zillia provides. But there are problems in Zillia in terms of visuals. And those problems are the field map and the sea haven and the pop-in. The field maps are kinda bland overall. They don't look awful, i probably say they look decent, but they do feel a bit samey at times. The sea haven isn't really much better with them also feeling very samey, but I do still like the visual design of the Sea Haven. Another problem with the visuals is, as I said, the pop-in that occurs in the game when you go in an area with NPCs with you, well, NPCs popping up later, like 5 seconds later when the air is loaded. So yeah, but despite these issues, I still find Exilia to have my favorite visuals in the series. Animation wise, I say the in battle animations are done pretty well, and the special effects that your various arts produces also look pretty good. The cutscene animation are also more dynamic in Zillia in comparison to the other games in the series, which is a nice improvement. And the cutscene animation themselves are decent. Okay, next thing I'll talk about is the anime cutscenes in Zillia. They're awesome! I mean, 
The anime cutscenes was made by Ufotable and well, they do great animation almost every anime they do. And Zillia is no exception in terms of anime cutscenes. From how the anime cutscenes are directed, slash the cinematography, the backdrops, the animation of the character and other assets, etc., the anime cutscene in Zillia is probably the best the series got to offer in terms of anime cutscenes quality. Okay, towards the sound department of Exilia. The original soundtrack for Exilia is pretty good in my opinion. It's probably my second favorite soundtrack in the Tale series, being right next to the awesome soundtrack that is Legendia. But most of the tracks in Exilia are composing of orchestral scores, though there's also a bit of jazz mixed in there. My favorite tracks in the game is probably Believe in Oneself, which is a great boss theme, The Meaning of the Mission, Beyond the Colorless World, The World Sinking to Darkness, and I really do dig the final boss theme in this game. All in all, it's a very solid soundtrack. Voice acting wise, I thought it was really good to great overall. Most of the characters were well cast, and I thought the voice acting itself was good. Which is great since it really adds a lot to the story, and especially the skits. Which is pretty important in a Tales game in terms of presentation. Though there are a few lip syncing problems here and there in the cutscenes, but I don't think it takes away from the game too much. Okay, right into the story. Story wise, the game takes place in Riza Maxia, a world that has persevered through the symbiotic relationship that exists between spirit and the denizens of Riza Maxia. The story basically gets us to follow as either Drew Mathis, a medical student studying at Tenna Medical School in Fanmont, or Mila Maxwell, a woman who is able to channel the four great elemental spirits and is said to be the Lord of Spirits, Maxwell. Anyway, the story officially starts when our duo have a chance encounter in Fanmont Research Center, with Mila trying to find and destroy a possible weapon that could threaten the world of Riza Maxia and Jude being in the laboratory trying to find his professor. Anyway, as they wander in the lab, they happen upon the weapon that Mila was trying to find, the Lance of Kresnik. But just as Mila was about to destroy the Lance, the Lance is activated by a unique individual, should we say. <laughs> You're suffering! It's... it's worth it! So with the lance activated, let's just say this puts a damper on Mila's plans. Since it seems that she could no longer summon the four great spirits thanks to the lance activation. And let's just say that she's not all that strong without the four backing her up. What? Haven't you ever wielded a sword before? Anyway, due to this setback, Mila decides to go back to Niakara to try to recover the power of the four great spirits back. With Jude coming along, since well, he's now deemed a high ranking criminal in Fenma, for not only breaking and entering but also helping Mila. And that's how the story basically starts. Overall, I think it's a really good fantasy story with a bit of sci fi mixed into it. It really did have me invested to continue on to find out what would happen next. The intro of the game does a great job of introducing the characters and overall world building, and I also really love the world that Exilia presents to us. Though I say the story really gets going at chapter 2 when you get all your party members, and when the plot really gets going, the story does really have some great moments in there, such as the Shandu subplot, which I think is really well done. And the most defining moment in the game for me being the stretch between the returning to Fenmont to the end of Festival March, which is, in my opinion, one of the most epic Tales moments in the series for me. Seriously, I was really taken back at that part of the game. And the game surprisingly does maintain momentum throughout the rest of the game after that. Well, mostly. If there's one negative I have to say about the story, it's probably this. The events leading up to the ending when you get to Triglyph feels rushed, but the ending itself is pretty conclusive and satisfying. But the rush feeling is 
still a bit disappointing, as I did want to explore and learn more about Triglyph and surrounding areas. Which thankfully, Zillia 2 seems to do that. But regardless, I still found the story really engaging, it's probably my favorite story of the current gen Tales games I've played. Okay, there's one last important component I have to talk about that's regarding the story. This game, as you probably noticed, has a dual protagonist route with Jude's story and Mila's story. So you're probably wondering how different are the routes. They're mostly the same, but I think the exclusive scenes are still pretty significant. Though personally, I would recommend playing through Jude's story first and then Mila's side. Oh yeah, forgot to mention about the sub-events. There are optional events that you can encounter in the game that really fleshes out the world of Exilia or certain characters, and their voice as well, which is always great. Character-wise, I say the character of Exilia are great, and the main cast having really likable personalities, and their interaction is really good, as reflected in both the story skits and especially in the victory skit. Perfect! We did it! I have nothing left to teach you. Who made you teach her? And a good majority of the main cast does get some pretty good character development. But my favorite character in terms of development is probably Elise, which is also incidentally my favorite kid character in the series now. I especially enjoy seeing her development at the end of the game when it comes full circle. Which really did get me to really like Jude as he really does help Elise grow as a person. Well, I like Jude more than I did initially. And the rest of the character's development is also pretty well done. The only character I probably say doesn't get much development or isn't all that fleshed out is Leia. But she's still such a fun and peppy character that I didn't mind. But all in all, the main cast of characters are interesting, have great personalities that really mesh well with each other, and a good amount of them got pretty good development. And if you were to ask me who is my favorite character in the main cast, it'd probably be Elvin. The rest of the characters are fine, though I think some of the antagonists are a bit underdeveloped. Oh yeah, and I also find Ivor to be extremely annoying. Though there is one character I have to give special mention to, which is Gaius. Gaius is probably one of the most badass characters I've seen in a Tales game so far. Heck, one of the most badass characters in an RPG this gen. So yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna briefly talk about the skits since, well, they're pretty integral to the Tales games. I say the skits in this game are pretty good. The interaction is great, you get decent amount of world building slash character backstory in them, and the comedy is also really enjoyable. I still wouldn't say they're my favorite, which is still great stuff, but they're still really good. And I also really like the implementation of the few skits and battle skits, which is affected by what you do in, in terms of gameplay, which really got me immersed in the game. Overall, I think Exilia got some pretty good presentation. The visuals, while not technically impressive, is still a sight to behold thanks to its art style. And the animation are good overall, not to mention that the anime cutscenes in this game are done fantastically. And sound design wise, it's also solid with it having a very solid soundtrack, probably my second favorite in the series, and having really good voice work as well. The story is really good and got me hooked to find out what would happen next, and the characters are great overall. The negatives to the presentation in this game is probably the same with few maps in Sea Haven and the somewhat rush ending parts of the game, but still overall, I still really enjoyed Exilia's presentation even with those issues. Ready when you are. Who's next? Well done. Hit with darkness. Okay, now we get to probably the most important part of a Tales game, or any game for that matter. Well, most games, which is the gameplay. Okay, first thing I'll talk about is the combat system of Tales of Exilia. Like all Tales games, Exilia uses a variation of the linear motion battle system called the dual ray linear motion battle system. In the dual ray linear motion battle system, which I'll abbreviate to DRL and DS for now on. Like your usual Tales games, you'll be able to chain normal attacks and arts, which are your special attacks, together in order to form combos along with having other standard mechanics of an action RPG, 
moving, blocking, using items. So do note that uh, Tails item management is a bit different than other RPGs, etc. Exilia also comes back to using TB, which is the equivalent MP, basically, along with having free run in the game as well. Okay, now that I've got the standard mechanics out of the way, let's discuss the stuff that's different. There are two core mechanics in Zillia's combat system that's its main draw. The two core mechanics are the linking mechanic and the assault counter, which are abbreviated to AC like everybody else. There's also a third mechanic I will talk about which is pretty significant to the overall battle system, but I wouldn't really say it's as integral as the two core mechanics I mentioned before, but i would also talk about it later. The first of the core mechanics I talk about is AC. Now AC is similar to the CC system in Grace's F in that it determines how many types of attacks slash arts you can do per combo chain. And like Grace's CC via B arts, AC is really more to facilitate how the combat system has no art hierarchy. But the major differences between the two is that AC mostly emphasizes offensive play. And I mean really emphasize offensive play, with AC points recovering pretty quickly and how every arch that standard attack in the game costs 1 AC, in comparison to Grace's CC system with it trying to have a balance of both offensive and defensive play which result in Grace's CC having a task lower recovery rate and how each individual art usually vary in CC costs in comparison. Though because of how offensive based the AC system is, the return of the TP system makes it a good complement as a limiter. Though normal attacks in the game does recover more TP than the other Tails games in comparison. Okay, now that I discuss how AC works, let's talk about what determines the AC points to begin with, which is mostly determined by what skills you got equipped to your character. But you can also increase it in battle by doing critical attacks, which you can do by attacking enemy flank. Though do know that that AC increase only pertains to that one battle. It's similar to the critical gauge mechanic in Grace's F. And oh yeah, free running is non-restrictive in this game, just for people who's wondering. And that's AC in a nutshell. In a very big nutshell, but still. Okay, the next core mechanic I'll talk about, which is also Zillia's dual rate linear motion battle system main focus, is the linking mechanic. In battle, you are also able to link with other characters in the party, which they will be able to aid you in various ways, such as aiding you in combos, keeping enemies off your back, stun recovering you, giving you a boost of stats if you have the required skills to equip, etc. But the most notable feature of the linking mechanic is probably the partner skills and the link arts along with the link gauge. Okay now. Partner skills are basically techniques their AI partner can do when they're linked up with you, and depending on which character you're linked up with, the technique will change, such as linking up with Mila when able to freeze enemies in their tracks, while being linked up with Leia will enable her to steal an item from a downed enemy, which will prevent human characters to use items. Take note of that! It's extremely useful for a few of the bosses in this game. Uh, anyway. And linking up with Alvin will enable you to break a guard of an enemy, and etc. Each character got their own unique partner skills they bring to the table, and they're really useful, which will really prompt you to change AI partners in order to use a variety of partner skills to deal with any possible situation you find yourself in combat. And the game will also tell you optimize link partners for a particular enemy, which is pretty useful. Okay, the last core component to the linking mechanic is the link arts and the link gauge system. While you're link, you will be able to do powerful attacks called link arts depending on where you are on the link gauge, which is the blue bar on the left. And you build up your link gauge by attacking the enemy while linked, or if your AI partner does their partner skill. Link arts are basically powerful arts that are formed when two of your characters combine certain arts together, while linked of course. And they can range from just being a powerful attack, to healing techniques, to buffers, to elemental attacks, etc. And with each character in the game having the potential to have link arts with every other party member, you will have a vast amount of link arts you can use in your disposal. Though Jude and Mila combination are the combo that provides the most link arts. 
Activating a link art is simple enough, where you just need to do the specific art when pair over a certain character, and when you see the link art symbol, when you use the art, just press R2. Well, when you reach a plateau in the link art, which allows you to use one link art. You can also go to the art menu while you're linked up and see which art under your arsenal can you use with that particular partner. Or you can just go and search up the whole link art menu for that particular character you're using. Okay, now to talk about the overlimit system. In order to use overlimit, you basically need the link gauge to be full and use the link art. Why in overlimit mode? There are two noble things you can do. The first is your ability to chain consecutive link arts together, and you're also able to change partners during this chain in order to even use more link arts under your disposal until the over limit is expired. The second thing you can do is Mystic Arts. Why you probably won't have this until the later half of the game, you are all able to do Mystic Arts in the game if you use Arcane Art, which there's really only one Arcane Art for each character, and holding X will activate the character Mystic Art. Though do know that using Mystic Art will end the over limit. Well, unless you have the Over Limit Extend 3 skill equipped. And that's the linking mechanic. Oh wait, I almost forgot the negative aspect of linking. Do know that while you're linked, if an enemy attacks you, your partner will also get damaged. Though, then again, if someone heals you, your partner will also heal. Albeit they won't get healed or damaged to full extent, but small amount. But the most negative thing about linking is probably the status effects. If you get status effects for one of your character, your partner will also get a status effect. And let me tell you, this can lead to some frustrating defeats. So yeah. And those are the two main mechanics that are the main draw of Zillia's DRLMBS system. But as I said before, there's also a third mechanic that is pretty significant to the gameplay of Exilia, albeit not as essential. And that mechanic is character abilities. Character abilities are basically character specific mechanics that really differentiate character playstyle from each other. Such as Ju's snap pivot ability, which allows him to basically get behind his opponent if he dodges at the right time. Alvin's charge ability, which allows him to change his normal arts in a significant way, such as turning Sonic Thrust into Sonic Barrage, which allows him to down enemies and it has a much longer range. Or Mila's spirit shift ability, which allows her to use her spells as either elemental attacks or full on spells, and etc. Each character got their own unique character abilities, which in turn really makes each character really unique from each other. Albeit not all the character abilities are equal in utility, like Leia's elegant staff ability, but they're still fun to learn. And those are all the main mechanics of Exilia. Though there's also a lot more to say about Exilia's combat mechanics, such as how skill changes up the combat by adding passive skills, adding to character abilities, like Alvin getting skills to get more than one charge attack, or letting you use specific actions that you couldn't before, like unlocking Mila's air capabilities. And there's also the ability to switch your characters in battle. And no, you can't switch out unconscious people, elemental weakness such power hits, and etc. But I won't be going through all the nuances in the combat system, since this video is already as long as it is. Overall, Exilia has a very addicting combat system. It's fast paced, got tons of depth to it, and it's just overall really fun. The licking mechanic adds quite a lot to the system, and they're really satisfying to pull off. The AC system also allows tons of freedom with your arts, since there's no art hierarchy, which really allows you to experiment with which combination of arcs would work best with each other, which is always fun. And this AC system probably makes this one the fastest paced game to be localized. Well, in the 3D games at least. And I also really like the character abilities as it does make each character really unique from each other more than they already are, with them having their own unique set of arts and stats and fighting styles. And the characters are all blast to play through. But with that said, there are a few negatives to Exilia's combat system. The first is the slowdowns. 
While the slowdowns don't happen for the majority of the game, the combat does tend to have slowdowns for certain parts of the game, like Order Palace. The second is the final boss. The final fight in the game is really cheap in my opinion. And no, I'm not talking about how all the bosses in the game are able to break out of a combo chain. Yeah, that's annoying, but I am used to playing games with unstaggable bosses. And even with it, I still had fun with the bosses. What's annoying about the final boss is how much healing the boss can do, along with the boss having the skill Opportune Moment, which allows them to use the hourglass effect if the boss backsteps from your attack. So yeah! The last problem I have with Exilia's combat system is the limited strategy settings you got for linking AI behaviors. The strategy setting for the normal AI when they're not linked is pretty good, as you can modify it pretty extensively, though the AI options for linking is kinda limited. Though I heard that Exilia 2 does fix this problem, but all in all, Exilia's combat is still insanely fun even with those issues. Okay, next thing I go into is the progression and customization systems, which are the linear orb, skill system, and the attachment systems. The first thing I talk about is the Lilium Orb system. The Lilium Orb system is basically the main progression system in Tales of Exilia, where you increase your character stats, learn arts, and get individual skills via unlocking numerous nodes which are set up as a gigantic web. In order to unlock a node, you basically need GP which is earned through leveling up. Okay, once you get GP, unlocking a node is pretty simple, but you probably notice there are two types of nodes in the Lilium Orb system. The nodes that lie on the lining of the web, and the nodes that are within the web layout itself. The nodes that are on the lining are attribute nodes, while the ones on the web are art slash skill nodes. Unlocking the attribute nodes is simple enough as I said, as you just need GP to unlock them. With the art and skill node being unlocked by just unlocking the attribute nodes that surround each skill and art node. And as you fill up nodes, the web will get bigger as well. And that's the overall gist of the Lilium Orb mechanic. Overall, I say it's a pretty good progression system as each node or two you fill up does make you feel significantly stronger. And the rate of GP you get when leveling up does make it a steady rate of progression. Well, until you get into a late game, really late game, when GP steadily decreases as you level up. And the customization options of the Lilium Orb is also pretty good as you do have a decent amount of freedom to how you want to build up your character. With each character still feeling unique when you progress their limb orbs. Next is the skill system. It's pretty similar to Vesperia's skill system in how you equip them via just selecting the skills you want to equip while being mindful of the amount of SP you got. The only difference is, is how you get skills, which is through Lilium Orb in Exilia, while in comparison to Vesperia, which is through weapons. And the skill themselves, as I said before, can range from passive abilities to allowing you to do certain actions. And overall, the skill system in Exilia is done pretty well. Okay, the last thing I'll talk about in terms of customization is the attachment in terms of aesthetics customization. Which is overall just basically a system that allows you to heavily modify how your character looks via the attachments that you get in the game. And overall, I think it's a really neat system with all the amount of options you can do with the attachments that you collect. Okay, the last gameplay mechanic I'm gonna talk about is the subsystem, which is mostly just the shop system I'm gonna talk about. Anyway, the shop system in this game is kinda of different compared to the other games in the series. Since you need to upgrade the shops with materials, you get either for monsters or item bags on the field map in order to get better equipment. It's a decent system, and it does give off a nice feeling of progression. Exploration wise, it's similar to Grace's field to field system, but the field themselves are a lot bigger. And you can also fast travel pretty early in the game, which is always great. Difficulty wise, it has a wide range of difficulties, though I would recommend playing on moderate, since normal is pretty easy. Lengthwise, it took me about 55 hours to complete the game, with me trying to do a bunch of side quests and sub events. And talking about that, it gets me to talk about Tales of Xeria content. Okay, now this is a bit tricky. If someone were to go up to me and ask how much content Tales of Xeria 
have in comparison to normal RPGs as a standalone game, I would say it has a decent amount of content, with the side quests, sub events, Colosseum, EX Dungeon, via Magnet Zero, and etc. But Tales of Exilia is more than a standalone game. It is a game in a long running series. With that come certain expectations. And let's just say that Exilia doesn't quite meet with all the expectations of a Tales game. Well, in mostly in the content department. The amount of content in Exilia is quite frankly really lacking in comparison to some other Tales games. Yeah, I just leave it at that. Overall, the gameplay in Exilia is great with it having an addicting combat system, the progression slash customizations are done well, and Exilia is just an overall really fun game to play, with the cons being the lacking strategy settings for the linking AI, slowdowns, and the lack of content. Overall, I say Tales of Xeria is a great RPG that's a blast to play through. The visuals, while not impressive in the technical sense, are still great to look at thanks to its art style, the animations are good overall, the anime cutscenes are done beautifully, and the soundtrack and voice work are very solid. The story is also really good, with it possibly having one of the most epic moments i play in a Tales game, and the characters are all very likeable and most are developed pretty well. And the combat in Exilia is also fantastic. Why not be my favorite combat system, which is still Grace's Elf, it's still a tons of fun, and it got a good substantial amount of depth within the linking mechanic and AC system, along with each character having a pretty unique playstyle, and each character still being fun to play with. And personally, I probably feel that Tales of Exilia is my second favorite combat system in the series. And also adding to that, I find Mila to be the most fun Magic Knight I've played in the series. So yeah. Anyway, what else? Oh yeah. The progression and customization systems via Liam Orb and skill system are also done well. And Zillia overall is just a blast to play through. There are flaws, such as the same few maps like Sea Havens, the somewhat rushed ending parts of the game, how Exilia doesn't have as much content as other Tales games, though by itself it still have a decent amount, etc. But I have to say that Exilia is still a game worth playing through, and I still recommend the game wholeheartedly. Oh.